Good morning! A new week. As we say in Dutch, you know, a little bit of Dutch. A nieuwe week, a nieuwe ronde, a nieuwe kansen. Google Translate. Um, it's been a rainy morning all morning. It's, is it? Well, actually, it isn't even morning anymore. And it stopped raining, sun is trying to come up. So I thought right now is the moment to talk to you and welcome you to this new week. Because if it rains too, the, uh, this tin roof makes a lot of noise, which I love. But, you know, filming uh, sound-wise is not that easy then. I've been trimming the bowls and the plates that I uh, threw. Um, have been filming, so hopefully that is all going to be alright. Still some more bowls to go and some mugs to do. And then I have a lot to decorate. We'll just see what the brings what the brings weeks. Right? Yeah. We will see what the week brings, people. See you in the next clip. This is what these funky chickens and roosters do after it's been raining. Taking sand baths. At least they're quiet. Yes, except for that one down the road. Aren't they funny? Look at them squiggling around. Is that a word? I don't know. Have a nice bath! Oh, well, there it is, folks. Uh, another attempt to get you dizzy, I guess. There we go. Four marks trimmed and handled. In total, eight bowls and eight small appetizer plates. And, well, still a lonely vase that's asking for experiments, but no time. So I'll keep it here in the jimmy and keep it wet. And then, I can do that later. So it's on to decorating. Um, so the most of the pieces you just saw that I trimmed today uh, are going to get a scraffito decoration. And in one of my previous previous videos, I said I would do a tutorial. I have to be honest, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So I thought I would take you through my flamingo design, scraffito design, uh, a little bit more in depth in this video. I mean, why not while I'm at it? So I'll be starting to show, I will show you uh, with one of those appetizer plates and I will give you the numbers on the um, 
on the mason stains and show you how I do it and uh, will chime in every now and then to tell you why and, and such. Uh, let's start with the mason stains. When I do my multicolored scraffito, I tend to use three, sometimes for usually three colors. You have to test out whether the colors you will put on top will show because I start with one solid layer. And there's a reason for that. If you then carve, that dark layer will create a halo. And that is something I think is very pretty and I like. So that's why I put a first a solid layer of one color, usually a darker one. So you have to be aware of the colors that are going on top that they will show. It's test testing. It's just testing. Um, I'm going to do the flamingos, which will have three colors, a red, an orange, and a pink. The red one is... I don't think you can read it. <laughs> this is my slip with 15% in weight of the Mason Stain Red number 5987. And I believe it's n it now has a different number, but I'm not sure. How I do it is I take ready-made slip, so I, I, it's a bit unconventional maybe, but um, I make my slip, I measure 100 milliliters of slip in what I have as an average consistency, and I then weigh out 15% of that 100 grams, which will be 15 grams, and mix it in slip. That's how I do that. The second color is... Also just one single color, it's called Lobster, and it's 6026, also 10%, make exactly the same way. And I have created an orange, which is, in parts, one part of this red, which is 15% 5987, three parts, of 5% 6479. Let me check. I believe it's sunshine yellow. I'm checking. I'm checking. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Where is my tile? Oh, I'm missing a tile here. Oh gosh. I'm blundering already, people, and it's only Monday. Uh Hold on. Hold on, I'm going to look for it. It still works. It is 6479 Sunshine Yellow, which only has 5%. So again, the combination of this orange is one part red and three parts yellow. And now I'm going to cover this plate. First with the base coat of the red. So I, I will... It's time for the other two colors. Uh, I've had the question uh, of somebody that said that their colors would smudge and uh, you have to wait until it's dry to the touch. And I, uh, for the sake of demonstrating this to you, I'm doing only one. I would normally have two, three, maybe four in a row so I can make sort of a kind of a production line. I have to be careful here because it's hot here in the Caribbean, so things dry out fast, especially with thin rims. Um, so you have to figure that out for yourself, but it has to be dry to the touch, no more sheen. Because if it still is wet and you put on the next one, it will smudge. And I have already um, stirred them up a bit and I'm going to um, put on blobs. Really, it isn't more than that, but because this red color is very potent, I have to put on three layers of the lobster and the orange, or else they won't show. The, the red will be, um, I don't know, it's too strong and it, it, will, it will eat it. So here we go. Really, that's all I do. Well, in this case, anyway, for my flamingo design. 
I will then go to the orange. And I don't mind mixing them because that gives a nice effect. Now this pink lobster is still wet, but I'm only going to be putting it on the pink itself, so that's okay. And a little bit of mixing with the um, with the orange is fine too. You just have to make sure that that first solid layer is completely dry. So this is two layers. Now I'm going to wait just a little bit, let this dry a bit, and I'll come back in with some red. It's not completely dry yet, but it lost most of its sheen. So now I go in with the red again. I changed brushes into a small one because the red, although it's very potent, needs three layers to be opaque. And I'm just going to fill in and around the pink and the orange. There we go. Now I need one more layer of orange and pink and also one more layer of the red. I don't mind if it mixes now a little bit. That's the pink done. That's the orange done. And you can see it's quite blobby. It's not really smooth. I like it. I like it a little bit thick so you can really see the carving. If I put it on very smooth, it looks like it's painted on, and that's what I don't like. I want, want it to show that it's carved. That's just personal preference. A bit more red here and there. Let's, there we go. So now it's time for this to dry until it really has no sheen anymore, and then I can carve. If you start carving too soon, you will drag the slip. And uh, um, the layer underneath won't be completely, in this case, white, the color of the clay body. So now I have to be a little bit patient and keep track of how this goes. And then I'll be back. Time for the carving. Let me show you up close. No more sheen. Completely dry to the touch. But the clay and the slip is still... Um, well, let's call it leather hard. I get a lot of questions about when do you start carving? And um, I was born in the Netherlands. I moved to Bonaire many, many, many moons ago. And I have had to adjust because of the climate. So you are going to have to test. General rule, what everybody says, is leather hard. And there's leather hard and leather hard. So, you know, um, when you carve and your crumb falls off and doesn't stick to the pot, you're good. Um, I wouldn't carve when it's bone dry because of the dust it's, and you get your edges get, get chipped. If you carve when the clay is still soft enough but firm enough, that's when you get nice crisp lines. If that's what you want. Um, so it's difficult to say exactly when. I would call this 
exactly leather hard. I tend to, uh, depending on the shape and the size of my project, start a little bit sooner, a little on the softer side, because if I'm working with this for uh, a half an hour, the rims will dry out because it's so hot here. Now, it has been raining, so now it's very humid. So now it doesn't dry out that much. So, you know, um, not too soft, not too, not too dry. You have to try it out. Uh, of course, I get asked a lot about tools. Let's talk about tools. You can use freaking anything you want, okay? <laughs> I have made tools myself. Let me show you. Uh, do I still have one? Yes. Let me show you how I made it. You know these, right? I'm not going to, but you can take these off, the, the top part. And then you are left with... Do I have an empty one? Maybe... I saved them. Oh, yeah. Look, 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 look. Haha. Um, here's one. You're left with this wooden rod with a hole. Perfect to make a tool. This is one made from a staple. Can you see? Works. We all know these. They work. They work perfectly fine. And we, what, the ones I love, personally love the most, are these. The Dolan ones. I now have only have these. I'm in the middle of, of ordering more. Um, yeah, I love these. They last long and they stay sharp. Camper tools or even tools without a name on it work fine as long as it's a sharp edge and not a rounded one. You have rounded loop tools that are more for sculpting. Those don't work too well. You need a sharp edge. And um, I'm going to uh, do something uh, some people may not like. <laughs> we all know these, right? Everybody's raving about them, the diamond core tools. Love them for trimming. You've seen me trim with these. They do wear away fast. And they're not cheap. But I do love them for trimming. They stay incredibly sharp. For Scarfito. Not so much, I'm sorry. Look at this. I'm, I don't know if, if it will show, if you can see. I have used this a couple of times and it's almost through already. They, for, for the price, they were way, way too fast for me, personally. So find a tool. I have done Scraffito with Point pen. Do I have other funky ones? Well, no, not at the moment. <laughs> uh, I love my. Um, this, I draw with this one, and this is a stylus. It has a ball on the end. One bigger one, one smaller one. This is from. Oh, it was a gift from a friend who does nail art. Uh, sorry, I'm lying. She does dot art with paint and she got this from uh, a store that sells things for nail art. I've been using this for I don't know how long and it doesn't wear away. Works perfect for the, the outline and the design. Um, there are more of them around. This is one as well. An oldie and rusty. Works. So try out tools. Um, design. The design. I have said before in a previous, previous video, I'm not a natural talent at drawing. But I am a natural talent at if I want something, I'm going to do it. So I practice and practice and practice and practice and practice. Many of my Scraffito designs by now I do freehand because I have drawn so many turtles and so many fish, and so much coral and so on and so forth. 
The flamingo, however, is, you know, it's a beautiful bird. It's quirky with this funny body, long neck and long legs. So I tend to draw my, uh, or sketch my flamingos first a little, just, you know, an outline. So I can get the proportions a little bit right, because it's a funky bird. It's a gorgeous one, but it's funky. What I use to draw is a 6B pencil. Very soft and doesn't scratch in my clay. Now, if you are not comfortable with drawing yourself, you can use um, a drawing on a, pe on a piece of paper. You can print something out online, make sure it's royalty-free. Royalty-free coloring pages are perfect. Cut it out, put it on your pot, trace it, and it will leave a soft indent in your slip, which you can then carve out. Uh, I'm going to draw a flamingo and probably some kind of flower. It's, it's a commission, so I'm um, sticking to that for this one. And then we'll get to the carving. Now, <laughs> I said that I don't mind it uh, a little bit thick because I like to be able to carve deeply so the carving shows. Uh, it's a personal preference, aesthetics. Um, I might have overdone it a little bit on this one, but that's okay. So I'm first going to sketch my flamingo with my soft pencil. Uh, I want this one looking that way. I usually start with the head. In this case, oh, that might be a bit too big. And the, the pencil will, well, if there's anything left at all, will burn out in the kiln. So don't worry about that. I don't think it's going to fit. No. Okay. That's good because I can show you what you can do about that. I have... I use these makeup sponges a lot. Almost no water in it. Wipe it away a bit, so it doesn't distract me from my second try. You see, you always get the second try. I need to move her a little bit, because the body won't fit. This is just a rough sketch. The rest I can do sort of kind of freehand, because I've drawn many now. a weird hump there. This goes in and then goes up again. Funky tail. You can call it a tail. I, do you know? I can't even get the, the, the funky legs on now. Uh, but that's okay. I don't really mind that. So there I have drawn sort of kind of a flamingo. Now I am going to draw the outline first. Where's my trusty stylus? Oh, there it is. I usually sit down and have it in my lap. I'm left-handed. I'm sorry, I have to go this, this way. Now, as you can see, these crumbs don't stick. So it's good. If they stick, it's a little soft, and um, if they really stick, you, you know, it, it can uh, mess up your design. Oh, it's too thick.
go. Flamingo, is he in there? Let's give him an eye. You can use a brush to get the crumbs off. I usually um, wait until it's bone dry and then brush everything off so I'm sure nothing is going to be um, re-pushed in there. I want a flower on this. Do I want a flower on this one? Yes, I do. Those by now I do freehand. Uh, where shall we put it? I switch between the two sides of my stylus because this is a thin one and I use that for the little details and a thicker one I use for the outline. So now it's time to carve. I really need new ones. They, these are a little bit, um, they are getting dull a little bit. These are, but this is a Kemper one and honestly it's old, really old. Now when I carve, as I said before, I like some of the uh, slip to show. I don't carve everything away and I start from my drawing outward depending on uh, on the direction and how I want my carving to be. I try not to go from the outside towards my drawing because if you slip up you're going to have to repair there with slips and things like that and why make your life more complicated than you need to. I'm going to have the carving go. I can go around if I want to. Do I want that? I don't think so. I have to think about the other things that this lady bought from me and they were, I believe, all vertical. So I'll go vertical. So I hope you can see. I go... I sort of kind of... Let me see. Uh-huh. I put my tool into that groove and then go down, so everything um, everything closest to the design is cut away and beyond that I leave a little bit of the of the slips in there you see and well you know that's sort of kind of is it we can talk about designs and you have a foreground and a background sometimes. I don't have that in these ones. So uh, maybe I'll talk about that in, oh, <laughs> in a different video. I tend to go a bit fast. Because I do not want my design to be very, very neat. And everything, you know, exactly the same size and straight. I like it a little bit random.
there we have it so far. I will turn it around so I can go from my design outward. You hear that birdie? I've been trying to film that birdie. It's a small banana clip. Uh, no, I'm not going to tell you yet. If I can catch him on camera, you will know. It's a bit of a sad story. If I have spots like this, where there's not a lot of room, these are my go-tos, my Dolan small ones. Love them! That's it mostly done. Now I will go over it and um, there's a little bit too much left here to my taste. I'll take that out. Um, fiddle a bit with it. and But that's it. That's how I make my flamingo design. I hope this helps. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate. Uh, there are probably things that, that I do or you see me do that I don't even think about how I do and why. So ask me and I will try and get back to you. And uh, I'll be doing some more of these today. See you. Back. Uh, I just I thought I'd show you what I did. This is the one I showed you. And... I have three variations. This just had, well, just <laughs> has two flamingos on it. This one has one dangling down, a cutie one. And this one has two different flowers. She has mugs with these kinds of designs on them as well. So that's why I, uh, for this uh, uh, order, I did it this way. Um, I hope this helped. I uh, hope you like it. I hope it made any sense. <laughs> so let me know. And I will be um, continuing with some scrofito and some bowls next. So, hey folks. I thought I'd be generous and give you a bonus. Uh, in the sense of slip recipes. I have a mug. Can you see it? Oh, I don't think so. There it is. I have a mug waiting. And it's going to be uh, receiving a goat, profito goat. So I thought I'd share with you the colors. In this case, the background color will be this one. It's a beautiful brownish orange. And um, to start off with the most complicated recipe, this consists, consists of one part dark chocolate, I think it's called. Do I have the number? No. 15%. And it contains four parts of two parts, six, four, nine, seven. One par part, five, nine, eight, seven. Which is, if I am correct, the orange. No, it's not. Almost. It's almost the same orange as the orange I showed you before. It's slightly darker. So one more time. 
it's one part dark chocolate and four parts consisting of two parts 6479 sunshine yellow one part 5987 red for black I use velvet which is oh, it's black you know although no that's not true there are different kinds of blacks this is uh, a cool blue black I also have another one that's more what you could call green warm black I use the velvet it's 6609 10% now if you want a gray do not think that by using less percentage of the black will give you a gray because it won't you really have to buy a gray mason stain the other brown that's going in there is this one and this is 10% 6107 which is the dark golden I am going to combine these three on the mark and I'll get back to you um, when I start decorate, uh, decorating start putting on the design um, this will be the same way as the previous one one solid color of this because I do not want black in this case <coughs> and then these two will be blobbed on so to speak uh, I'll get back to you when I've done that The mug has its layers. Um, this mug was still fairly wet. So now that I have put three layers of slip on it, it's even wetter. <laughs> so I'm going to have to wait a little bit before I can carve. In the meantime, let me show you something uh, that I found is very different from using underglazes, because you can use underglazes for scraffito or even stroking coats if you want. I have used and still use sometimes the Amico Velvets. I like them very much. But uh, if you use an Amico Velvet, the color that's in the bottle is sort of kind of what it's going to be. But not so with slips. Look at that difference. This color is going to be that. So, don't be fooled by that and don't think you are going to have to um, put more in or that something is wrong. Let me show you the other one. This one comes pretty close. It's just more intense, um, but it comes sort of close. <coughs> and other ones can be completely different from what it Eventually, eventually will be after it's placed. I'm going to. Oh, oh, my neighbor comes, so my dogs want to respond. <laughs> um, this is going to have to dry a little bit because it's, it really is too wet, and then I'll get back to you with the decoration. Oh look! This is what my hobby brought me. So taking a break. It's. I finished my ice cream. <laughs> Uh, oh, what a lovely surprise. Uh, this one's now dry enough. And I wanted to show you what I was talking about uh, earlier with using, well, I guess you could call it a template. I had been, um, I looked up a video on YouTube, how to draw a goat a while ago. And these were my uh, scribblings. And I like them, they're good. And because this is not in my muscle memory yet, so to speak, I used that, or used that in the beginning to, um, to transfer it. And I will show you how I do that. Um, and here I have an old bat. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> With some foam on it. You can use a towel. I did that before. You've seen that. But um, this works as well. Let me grab my mug. There we go. So I will put this down, down. Place this on top. And it is a bit finicky or, well, what, what shall I call it? You know, it's not, um, it's 
not always as comfortable. Depends on the shape you are working with. Oh, it fits. Barely fits. Barely fits. But here we go. I will just trace with the stylus. But you can use a pen uh, as well. And I will just push. Not too firm, but firm enough so it will hopefully yeah, leave an indent in the clay. Now, let me show you. I hope this shows up. I can see it here. Sometimes, as you can see, because this is still has some moisture in it, the paper will, but you know, with the carving it will come out and if not, it will burn out. And now I can do this, follow those lines with the stylus again and then do the carving. So I'll get on with that. people there he is the cute goat and the little brother so that's how I go about putting on a design which I cannot draw freehand yet and get it on there piece of cake people go do some scraffito morning Wednesday morning and I finally took the time for a long overdue haircut So funny when I wanted to make an appointment I asked for my favorite hairdresser and she hadn't worked there anymore since the beginning of the year That's how long I haven't been to the hairdresser So I'm happy that it's all done now And then when I came home I thought I would transfer all the footage onto my computer start a little bit of editing of the things you have just seen and I noticed that of course this is going was already going to be a very long video so this is where the vlog will end this week just you know I do not want to put out a video of hours and hours there I hope you enjoyed it I hope you liked it I hope it helps um, it's, it's just the way I do things nothing personal nothing you know it's just how I like to work and that's all ever changing as well. So who knows what other things I oh, ah, might come up with that make things better for me. So um, I'd say keep track. It's an ever evolving thing, this ceramic journey. I will leave you with a little bit of footage of another beautiful, beautiful bird that lives here on Bonaire. And I will see you again next week. Bye for now.